what's up you guys I don't know if you can hear me so well so I'm gonna try to like talk closer to the camera but um, there's so much happening right now still um, ever since moving to Bali so I'm gonna try to like be organized and normal um, I'm gonna show you guys um, my new scooters and um, I'm gonna like try to capture a little bit of me driving but we're in Bali and uh, it's everything that I hope and more. It's a really awesome place and I'm trying to be like more chill and take things day by day. Like I'm trying not to plan all out into the future right now. Like I'm, not, I'm trying not to like think everything all the way through and just try to be very step by step in everything I'm doing. So this video, I want to focus about focus on my human design. So if you guys remember, like a month or a couple months ago in San Cristobal in uh, Chiapas, Mexico, I had um, I met. Francis, ooh, spider was on my foot. I met Francis Cassidy, an Irish um, the human design expert, and he analyzed my human design, which is my birthday, my birth date, time, and location, and he put it in a chart, and based on philosophies like the chakra system, astrology, I think, um, Kabbalah, like quantum physics, all these things, he put it all together into a chart and he discovered my human design, which is basically like a mapping out of all the different parts of me, like my personality, um, my strengths, limitations, all the things that I should be like focusing on more, and I don't know if it's hard to tell. I don't know if it's hard to hear me with this sound, but I'm gonna go for it. So anyways, uh, Francis put my my personality, who I am basically, in my chart, and it was really cool. Like, actually changed my life to be able to see myself in that way. And what he discovered was that I am a manifester, which is about 7% of the population. Um, I am led by my splenic authority, which is like my instincts. Um, I'm very instinctively led, like my body, my whatever. I do things like for a lot of people it might seem like my decisions are very impulsive. Because they are, because your instincts can't really like predict into the future. They're just more just kind of like right now, what I feel like doing, what works right now. And my profile, my human design profile, is three over five. Three is like my conscious profile. Five is my like unconscious profile. So I'm a conscious experimenter, unconscious um, heretic. So I'll explain a little bit more about that. But actually, let me let me take you guys to a quieter place. It's really relaxing here, but. Um, because of the water stream, but I, I actually worry that you might not be able to move so well. So let's go, let's go to like a quieter place. Put on my shoes. Hello. Hi.
is our room. It's kind of messy, but here we go. So I originally tried to do this on a GoPro, but then I realized that my GoPro, the sound is even worse. So in the future, I'm gonna try to do a GoPro with a mic. I'm gonna try to see if I can arrange that. But it's so complicated. You see all the work I go through to try to film for you guys? So as I was saying, I did this human design session and it was like life changing. Like, um, by the way, I don't know if you could tell I'm gaining some weight but I still have a rash, bacterial rash, um, and I hope it'll go away. It's not itching today, but some days it, it really, really itches. And that was just because the previous place that we were in had a water problem, so we were having like a lot of bacteria in our bodies, like bacterial imbalance. So um, I did this set, I did this reading, and I think it's really interesting. Um, the reason why I made the title of this video, like my human design profile, my uh, you know manifestor splenic authority, because it's really interesting when you find that you're like a certain type to try to find other people that are have that are also that type, and then like what struggles they've had, what things that they like what kind of career paths they ended up following, what things they did, um, to you know how their dating life is. So my life path has been, for any manifestors that are out there, and not all manifestors are like me, there's different types of manifestors, there's some people are have the emotional authority led by the solar plexus, and of course Francis can elaborate on this much better than me because of course he's the expert but there's like different types of people there's people that are led by their like mind there's people that are led by their emotions people that are led by their ego um for me i'm led by my instincts so and then even with the different types like there's different profiles like you might be like one, which is an investigator, two is a hermit, three, I'm three, my, my conscious profile is three, that is an experimenter. Um, four, I think, is like someone who builds like really deep connections. Five is my second one, my, my unconscious profile, that's my, I'm a heretic. Um, and six is like a mentor, like the, the wise person role model some people call it role model and all these different things there could be different combinations you might be like consciously one thing subconsciously another thing and by consciously and subconsciously i mean like different parts of your personality are some of it the conscious part might be the part of you that you know about yourself that you identify as the unconscious part of it might be like the part of yourself that is you in your personality but that you don't necessarily see in yourself that's like your underlying personality that other people might see maybe a little bit better than you can see. So, um, my life as a splenic authority manifester with three over five profile, like I might be saying this wrong, um, but just so you can get to know me as like an example of this. Um, very chaotic. I have like had like I, I maybe maybe like tens of thousands of relationships, uh, friends, acquaintances, people I know, people I've met, actual like romantic relationships, like all kinds of relationships. Um, definitely, I'm definitely an experimenter, kind of all over the place. Manifestors, unlike generators, we don't have a, a defined sacral center in our in our chart, um, so we tire very fast we can't like do the nine to five grind like everybody else and this was so validating for me to see in my chart there's so many things seeing my chart was so validating like there's so many things that i already knew about myself but i was kind of fighting i was like resisting um 
but when I saw my chart, when Francis kind of like did the outline for me and was like, yeah, this is how you are, this is how, this is your purpose, this is what, you, what you're trying to do, um, it just kind of allowed me, it, it gave me permission to let go and just be whatever I am and do whatever I'm doing, which was really valuable because I feel like almost everybody I know is fighting certain aspects of themselves and I think that creates problems because you're like trying to be something, trying to be a certain thing, you're trying to fit yourself in a certain box. Um, so a lot of people like that. You're trying to fit yourself in a certain box. It doesn't work for you, but you were taught at some point that you have to do that thing. You have to be that certain way. Um, and then it's like you're, you're just put, constantly putting energy into things that aren't becoming fruitful because you're not focusing on what you are and what your strengths are. And instead, you're focusing on what somebody else told you. And I, a lot of people are like this. Um, and especially, I'm like this. Because um, if you notice in the human design chart, like when you don't have certain parts of your personality that are very defined, it's very easy for other people to step in and fill those gaps. So for manifestors, we don't have their, our sacral, um, our sacral like center defined. So. What that means sexually, I'm just gonna put it out there because I that's your sacral center is very much tied to your like libido and everything like that. Uh, for me, what that means is that I have never had like a certain way that I was like sexually. It was always just depending on what the people around me were. So like if someone was like had a very high sex drive, then I thought I had a very high sex drive. If somebody had a very low sex drive, I thought I had a low sex drive. So it, it never was like coming from me. It was always like reflecting like somebody else. Um, another thing was, um, another thing, okay, there's just so many parts of my human design, but I'll touch on first the manifestor parts. The manifestors, um, we, I think all manifestors have a defined throat chakra, which is basically the part of you that speaks, speak that manifests, speaks to energy. So like whatever you speak becomes the truth. And you don't realize as a manifestor, because you're 7% of the population, you're kind of like outnumbered. You don't realize how valuable the things that you say are and how impactful they are. You don't realize how much it affects other people, what you say, and how you, you know, what you bring to life. Um, and, but the thing is, you also can't help but to keep saying and to keep sharing and talking. And I knew this about myself before because I always was a talker and I always wanted to share. And I didn't care what I was sharing, I just wanted to share. And um, I was always surrounded by people that, you know, my friends, family, people at work, that were always trying to suppress it because it was so scary to them. Because for them, it was like me speaking. They might have not realized it at the time, but I had so much power in my speech. For me, it was breathing. I needed to communicate constantly. That was my breath, my breathing. And that's why I make these vlogs, because it's like, I just need to do it. And there's some people that really like it. And, um, but for a lot of people, like in my, in my real life interactions, everything that I said was so terrifying and uh, because it was so impactful to them. And I never understood the gravity of that at a, as a manifester because it's like, like imagine you breathe, you're breathing and everybody around you is trying to stop you from breathing. Like, it's, it's kind of torturous and a lot of manifestors um, and I have met so far two manifestors two manifestors that I also happen to be very close to but I just discovered that they're also manifestors um, they have the same thing they, they have this problem problem or power where they but it's a problem when you try to fight it where they just need to be sharing all the time they it's, it's not, it's a need, it's just who they are. And they're just sharing. And people care about what they have to say. Either they hate it or they like it, but people care. 
like what they have to say or they're trying to suppress it or they're trying to run away like they're trying to do something about it because people are severely impacted by their speech and they might um, feel really ashamed about it so if you're a manifester that's like one thing is like you, you just this is your job in the world like this is literally like your purpose as a manifester in this planet is that that's how you are and you just you just got to be okay with it just accept it if you don't want to hurt people's feelings avoid people that you might hurt their feelings I like for me um, I also have a very analytical brain so I can be very judgmental so it's really important for me to not be around if I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings it's really important for me to not even have on my radar people and things that I don't like because I might hurt their feelings so if you don't want to hurt people's feelings, if you don't want to be that person, you know, and I just had a conversation with my really close friend this morning, if she's watching, she, which she probably isn't watching, but uh, she's a manifester and she has the same exact problem. And we're, and, and, and for me too, she always tells me things, but like she, she always, uh, she always says things and then she like apologizes. Um, and she'll be like, oh, like, you know, what I, I'm just shit talking. It's not shit talking. You, this is who you are as a manifester. You have to embrace it. And instead of beating yourself up over the fact that you are a person that shares what you see, like let's say you're in a place where everybody smells really bad and you say, oh, everyone smells. I do that. I would, I would do that if I was in a place and everybody smelled. I can't help it. That's how I am. And if I don't say it, it I will literally get a headache. Like I will feel, I will suffer. And as someone that's not a manifester, you will not understand this, so that's okay. Um, and it's just really, it's really interesting to, to, like it's really interesting to learn about human design and then start actually um, asking your friends like what, you know, what theirs is, what they, you know, ask, their birthdays, whatever, um, get, tell them to have, get a reading to go and find their own. So, um, which by the way, if you guys don't know what your human design is and you want to get a design, a human design reading, you can do that with Francis, the person who gave me the reading and he gave me a discount code, a uh, promo code. So, um, 30% off if you want to do it with Francis, 30% discount if you use my name, Pardis. So uh, that's, that's just really interesting, um, if you want to do it. If you don't want to, all those people in my, in my comments are like, you're selling us bullshit. If you don't want to buy what I sell, don't buy what I sell, okay? Um, there's so many stupid people. Like, so you, as a manifester, you have to just accept that you're just going to talk. And for me, a lot of it, 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 it's all driven by my instincts. Like, yeah, I have a hyperactive brain, um, and I have like a very active, like, genius line where, like, you know, it's just, um, I'm just always thinking, always analyzing um, everything constantly. But it's instinctive for me. It's not happening consciously. And in, in, if you look at my human designs, like my my defined centers are all like orange or I, I don't know like if you should not orange like they're 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 unconscious like all my defined centers are unconscious basically meaning like these aren't things that I'm doing consciously it's just it's natural it's like who I am and it's like it's so validating to finally just see it and accept it and be like hey you you don't you're not beating up your dog for being a dog, for salivating and smelling, sniffing things and wagging its tail. Don't beat up yourself for doing what you naturally do. For, for being. And if you're worried that if it's going to hurt people, it's going to be bad for other people, avoid people. Easy fix. You don't want to hurt people. Don't be around people. You know, um, Andrew does that. Andrew has certain things that he is worried, he, he is worried that he'll get triggered by certain types of people, certain this and that, and he avoids them. Easy fix. You avoid people that you don't want to, uh, that you don't want to hurt. Um, 
and another part of my profile. So splenic authority. If you're watching this because you're like, I'm a splenic authority. I haven't seen anybody that has the splenic authority. I, don't, I haven't noticed, so like, I've, I literally have been doing so much research. I've been like watching a ton of YouTube videos, so I've been like just trying to find other people that have the same things as me, which is why I made this video, because you might have certain aspects and you might be looking for it too. So I've been looking for people that have splenic authority and like, you know, there's like public databases of people's human design profiles. Um, I don't know anyone that has it, but uh, being guided by my instincts, um, basically that's what it is. I, um, you know, I'm not necessarily going to tell you an opinion today and have the same opinion tomorrow. And I knew this before, you've seen it in my videos, I've like always said this. I'm not going to say the same, I'm not going to have the same opinion, opinion today as I will tomorrow. I will not have the same plan today as I will tomorrow. I won't have the same, like, thoughts, feelings. It's all going to be different. Uh, because it's really just based on, like, how I'm, like, just my instinct of the day, you know, my instinct and how it's kind of, I'm moving through the world. Um, so, yeah. So my profile, three experimenter heretic, three five. So um, I'm constantly moving through different things, through different communities. I, you know, my my family is Rani, Jewish. We joined the ultra orthodox community when I was really little. We became very religious. Like I'd say religious because there's so many types of religious, but. That was the way that my family wanted to be, and I spent like a big chunk of my life. I spent a big chunk of my life as ultra orthodox, and I really didn't like it. Sorry if you're ultra orthodox and you like it. I really didn't like it, and it was extremely suppressing for me. I hated being controlled, suppressed, told what to say, not say, do not do. I like doing my thing. I'm an experiment. I like trying things. I like thinking different things. And I'm also a heretic in my profile, which is a second line. A heretic doesn't like to be in systems. So um, it's, it was just very restricting. It felt very restricting to be in a system where they expect you to be a certain way and they want you to um, think a certain way and if I, I raised my hand a lot and asked questions when I was in school and it really bothered people because they don't like having things questioned because it's such a rigid society. In a rigid society like that you can't you can't be asking questions. You can't be thinking out of the box. There are thought crimes that you can have. I don't know if it's like this. I think Catholics have this, but it's like there's literally thought crimes. You can be committing a crime if you think something that is wrong. I don't like that. And then I left the community and I was like in politics and politics had that. There were all kinds of cults and systems and politics and I was like, ah, I don't like that either. And then I was like, just the culture. I feel like American culture is very much a system and it's like everyone's just kind of like keeping each other poor <laughs> and uh, poor, humble, uh, hyper-medicated. I don't like to be medicated like the way that everyone else is. Um, so that's my heretic and I also like, um, I noticed I was watching some YouTube videos about heretics. Apparently heretics really like um, attention from strangers, which really resonates with me. I love like strangers watching my personal life. Um, it's just fun. I don't know why. Sue me. So yeah, that is the human design thing. So like how my life has looked, I have moved around quite a bit moved between different ideologies. I don't have my G center defined, which is like my direction in my human design, 
my your your sense of direction, what you want. You know, a lot of a lot of parts of me are not defined. So other people can really step in and like fill the gap. Like other people, like someone else can come in and tell me what to believe. And if I don't like take ample time to myself to like really be in my own head and like think about what I believe, another person can like at least in the moment they can really really affect how I, I think I believe because I really really am very easily dominated by my environment very easily um, and I think that's another reason why a lot of people get protective of me like let's say I'm dating somebody new people will feel protected because it, because they should be because I'm so easily affected and dominated by my environment um, you know if I'm with someone and they're being emotionally manipulated manipulative I'll sense that they're doing that in fact I have a very strong instinct when it comes to danger that I should get away, but um, as long as I'm in their physical presence, I'm going to be in trouble in that regard. And um, so it's really, really crucial for me, not only who I date, what I'm, you know, people that I'm friends with, people that I'm close to, but like even literally who is in my environment. Because I also I don't have an, a defined emotional center. So um, I can pick up anybody's emotions in the street. I can pick up your emotions and I can think that that is my emotion. That that is what I'm feeling. But it's not what I'm feeling. But I can think that it is. So that's actually part of why um, I made a really good decision to, with my partner, move to Bali. Because Bali is it's huge. First of all, there's just like so much happening here, there's so much to do, and it is the kind of place where people go to be happy. Like people come here so that they can heal, they come here to start their businesses on a budget. Um, you know, you can live on like pretty much any budget, depending, like there's just so many different options. You can go to like a restaurant and pay $30, $40, you can go to a restaurant and pay $1, $2, like there's just so many different options. You can spend thousands of dollars at a hotel. You can spend like $200 at a hotel. Like, I mean, there's just, the range is just so big. And um, people are, like, you're, you're just surrounded by people that are exploring, having fun, getting to know themselves, healing, happy there is permission to be happy like my whole my profile is basically like by invitation like it's really hard like I have the things that I want to do myself but it's really hard for me to come out and say it or to come out and do it or to come out and feel it or to come out and even think it without invitation and so if I'm surrounded by people that are giving me red lights I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be very restricted. And I'm gonna be in my not self. I'm going to be very angry. I'm gonna be constantly angry, anger every day. Uh, that's a big, huge theme for um, manifestors that are not able to be our authentic self. We're not able to express ourselves. We become very angry. Um, and yeah, I've been gaslit a lot in my life. Um, because people will suppress me because they don't understand how to deal with someone like me, so they'll suppress me. And then they will see me pop off at them being angry, snap at them or shut down or whatever it is that I will react in the moment. And then they'll basically, in their mind, will reinforce of like why they should have like controlled me or suppressed me or this and that. And so it becomes like a cycle. So um, it's really important if you are like me. <laughs> uh, and I know a lot of people are, because my friends, at least, I've literally the past week I talked to several people that are so similar to me in this regard. It's just really important to be in a very inviting environment where you're surrounded by nature, you're surrounded by animals, you're surrounded by like, 
if you're surrounded by people, there are people that are very happy and they're doing their own thing and they're kind of focused on themselves. And that's where you'll be able to focus on yourself and be happy and do what you want to do. Because if you're led by invitation, like if you, you know, it's just really hard to do that in a place like New York City. Like, holy shit, I never want to go back to any metropolitan city like that because it, it really took a lot out of me and it, it made me sick. All right. I'm trying to decide if I should. Um, maybe, maybe now it's a good time to go and to go for a little drive. Yeah. Go we'll see Andrew. By the way, you guys want to see my see bathroom? Ta-da! There's the bathroom. It's a bamboo chair. Put this in my baby shorts. Bye. Bye. Do it.
riesengroß. Okay, you can't see the front, so you'll have to wait until I get my GoPro. parking lot for this club. That's where Andrew's working too. I might have to close the camera here because I don't know if they actually allow filming, but we'll see.